So <laughs> this is full of crocs. So if we see the team all walking around in them, we'll know they haven't paid the rent for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But what's, what's, who's bought that many crocs? I don't know. Into the country to... Amazon. Yeah, well... Doesn't even like stack up, does it? Pick it up there, Malcolm, and just hold it up. Yeah, that's the winning manufacturer trophy. Winning manufacturer trophy for so Monte Carlo. I'm really it's pretty special. To say now we've got, I think we've got four. You've got a couple of them. We've got four of these now. Fantastic. So, so three WRC wins, I think, and one Super 2000. We had a little look around here earlier on. It's fantastic. But the one thing that really uh, took my eye was the Poland trophy. <laughs> it's fantastic. Listen to this. You need a bigger room, boss, if you carry on. Yeah, that's, huh? that'd be a nice problem to have, wouldn't it? <laughs> There's some great history in here now. This is where it all started, look. This is the, 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 the early Mark II. Yeah, but this is where it really started. Oh, is it? Good God, look at that. I think what 1970. Then? God, I was only four then. So this is when Ford used to do... Yeah, um, rally, rally forums. Day, but full-day rally forums. And I, 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 really, I got into trouble because I took the day off school. Do you know any of these people in the background? Yeah, yeah. That's there's Elaine's dad. Good God, Timo Mackinnon. Yeah, Timo Mackinnon. Incredible. Um, that's an early county garage car. That's in the Isle, Isle of Man. That's 1977 in uh, on Five Ton Bridge in the Isle of Man. When the, it's got the, a little bit crossed up there, haven't you? Group One car, yeah. Was that the um, broken ankles job? Yeah, that's the that's the one in the that's Scottish 1980 before, where I broke both my ankles. So. <clears throat> I'm sure we don't want to be showing this too much, do we? The price is on here. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, is that you in the forest jacket as well? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, this is the car that changed your life and changed your fortunes, really, yes. didn't it? Well, it's I felt car. my career had come to a standstill and I needed to do something about it. Um, and I needed to be in a four-wheel drive car, so I made the commitment to buy Stig's championship winning car. A lot of skill there, a lot of skill still. Malcolm Wilson Motorsport in them early days, isn't it? That was a yeah. debut of <coughs> debut of the RS200. On the Lindis Farm. <coughs> on the Lindis Farm. You developed that car, but you ended up taking this car because Austin Rover offered you a World Championship programme and they offered you the, the, the world, uh, basically. The, the programme was very similar to Ford, but this was a three-year uh, uh, guaranteed sort of programme. It yeah, was a way right. ahead of things like the, the Quattro. Was it? Was it? But sadly, then, as the... The Lanciers you know, had come on. With the, the, you know, the, yeah. we went, this only had, like, less than 400 horsepower, yeah. and then we were then competing with the Lanciers and the Audis with 500, yeah, yeah, 600. Yeah, yeah. That was my pilot car, which... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That was one of the first cars you built up here. Yeah. And that's just that's a nice special picture, isn't it? Yeah, which, yeah that must be 2007. 2007. 2007 or 2008. Well, yeah, it'd be 2007, I think, yeah. And where was that? Was that Australia? Australia, that was Perth. I'm just looking to see if I'm in here. Hey, or was okay. it taken before I arrived? I'm sure I was there. There I am, look! Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> see, it is true. Malcolm did fly me to Australia first class. Gosh, that was a mistake, wasn't it? <laughs> Do you remember we hit a snake underneath the seat of your car? Oh, yeah. oh my God, it's so fun, didn't we? It doesn't get much special, more special than this, though, because this was very special, wasn't it? This was done... This was the safari-winning car with Colin. I, I always remember Carlos saying to Uwe Anderson, I was there when he, on, the, on the penultimate day, he said to Uwe, Uwe, when is that bloody focus going yeah, to break? Down. It's impossible to bring a new car to safari rally and win. But that's where Colin was a master. He, he, for all his flamboyant style, he just had incredible mechanical sympathy. I mean, it will probably be the only rally that Colin won where he never actually had the fastest time. Right. But he just But knew... this, again, was another fantastically reliable car, car. in general. Well-engineered, well-made. He spent the time to develop it early on, and you had a lot of success with this, with this car. I mean, I know Colin was, the, Colin was the master, wasn't he? But it all... Yeah, but we never won the championship. Obviously, we came close a few yeah. times, but uh, in all the difficult rallies, this was where the car was incredible. You know, Colin were all the, the, the Cyprus, the Acropolis, the Argentinas. There's pictures uh, of so fantastic far. pictures of him. He rolled the car in uh, Turkey. Was it Turkey Cyprus. or Cyprus? And then he, he repaired it, it and he got going, and he got going again yeah, and yeah, again, and yeah. it just came back, didn't it? Yeah. This, this is the car that you uh, developed completely from new, wasn't it? This was your first sort of um, 
M Sport, Malcolm Correct. Middleton Motorsports, Co attempt Sport at building a new car. And you didn't build it here, did you? No. You built it down in... In... Um, what was his name, know. the boy who was down there? Gunter. Hunt. Will oh, Hunt. Will Hunt and, Will Hunt and Gunter were, were <coughs> responsible, weren't they? Down in Myra. No, in uh, Millbrook. Millbrook. What was so, that? Why, why, the, why was that? Why did you do that that way? Because, uh, well, one, we didn't have the space at my current place. Yeah, because you weren't here then, were no, you? You were we still in here. at home. Um, so that was the primary reason. Another reason as well was that we actually launched the rally car at the same time that the road car was launched. So right. Paris, right. 1998, right. was when they launched the road car right. and the rally car at the same right. time. So we had to do it in secret. Um, and of course, we'd not have an, this facility finished. Yeah. Um, I took the option to, and obviously then employed Gunter to And Gunter, the Gunter is obviously now involved in Formula One, an extremely the controversial team. manager of the Haas team and says and does some weird things, doesn't he? But he was uh, quite an incredible engineer at the time, wasn't he? He was a, uh, where Gunter was great, was it? It was great at pulling the team together and getting, getting the best out of everybody and, and obviously getting this car done in record time. Is there a space, a place for Malcolm Wilson in Formula One then? You never know. Um, do you have any aspirations to do that? Oh, all I would say is... Is it on the bucket list? We've got the facility, we've got the resource. Um, who knows? You've done a bit of Bentley, you've done a bit of Roundy Roundy. Who knows? Does that interest you? Um, I have to say, yeah, it does. Do you sit and watch it? Uh, I watched the last end of last season. Yeah, I found it, I, I I found it honest, I went very to, exciting. I, I went to Saudi. I was, at, right. I was at the uh, Saudi race, right. so... Uh, yeah, that, that we might be able to read something into that then. You never know. <laughs> eh? It's beautiful to see this new facility. I saw it in its embryotic <laughs> state some years ago, but it looks fantastic. And here we are in your wonderful showroom. You're a very lucky man to um, have, probably own, all these beautiful cars. They're not all mine. <laughs> That's what all people say who've got a showroom like this. Let's start at the beginning over there with what you just said was what? The first... This is the, um, this is the first car registered in, in Cumbria, in Cumberland, as it was then, 1903. Uh, and it's a, it's a Peugeot, so the, the French were here already. First <laughs> registered car in... Uh, How did you find um, something like that? Uh, and, well, what happened was I was away on a rally and there was a feature about the family that had it in Cumbria and that they were selling it. Um, and it had been in the same family uh, all, all, all of its life. Yeah. And uh, actually, my mum had actually cut the piece out of the Daily Mail or the Express, and it, when I got back from the rally, it was on my desk. desk. And she just put on, you need to buy this. So when, when mum says you have to do something, you have to do it. So uh, then, so I'm only the second owner of and this And is camp. it still gold? It does, I haven't had it going, but it, it, uh, it was still running. As you can see, in 1960, yeah. it was still yeah. taxed, so. So there's no reason why it wouldn't go if you uh... Knew how to start it, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. <clears throat> You're a Ford man through and through, I can tell. Um, and you've proved that with your alliance to them over the years through rallying and what have you. And, and here is well, a fantastic honest, example. It's, it's um, I don't know what you're aware, but it's 25 years now, our relationship. With, we've been working with them uh, unbroken for 25 years doing the, doing the, the World Rally Team. So. And that all nearly came to an end, didn't it, in Japan? You went out to Japan, you got off the plane and you got back on the plane yeah. in 2006. That, no, that was 2004. 2004, and you re-struck re, uh, the deal with Lewis Ford Booth to the keep the, uh, the M-Spot I mean, Lewis, going. to be honest, uh, Lewis had this vision that he wanted to get as he had the memory of the Mark I escorts and yeah, the customers yeah. and he wanted to recreate that which is what I wanted to do so yeah. we found a solution that uh, gave Ford what they wanted and also it gave us the opportunity to make a more commercially viable uh, A lot of people don't realise how important that decision was for you to leave Japan and come home and, and, and sort that deal out. Yeah, it was. Um, I think there was at one point in my room. I think I had three, three telephones on the go, <laughs> uh, and I just felt I had to get back to Europe and uh, see if there was any way that we could rescue the situation. And fortunately, uh, as I say, we did. We found a solution that worked for Ford and a solution that worked for M Sport. 
Uh, there's no Mark 1 in here. There's no Mark 2 in here. There is a Mark 2 on site, but apparently we can't see that due to embarrassing reasons. But we'll <laughs> skit along from Mark 2 to RS1700T. So um, you were involved in the development of that at the end of, what was it? 1982. 80s. Yeah. Uh, the, the idea was that this would be the car to replace the Mark 2 Escort. It was around the time of the Quattro and the four-wheel drive was starting to dominate. And Sadly, that's where Stuart Turner backfooted and decided to Stuart against... Turner came back in to be the director of Ford Motorsport and uh, he felt that you know this was not the future there was I think 14 or 15 cars built so everything went to South Africa and I rallied the car in the South African Championship in 1984 ah, right and I actually used this road car to go back and forward from Boreham to uh, Rivenal and then I also used it in South Africa to go back and forward from the PE factory to uh, the hotel and I um, know it's the only road car in the well, world only road car in the world so what is it it's a 1700 turbo oh. It's a 1700 BDA engine, but uh, it has a transaxle, so the gearbox is at the back. Ah, right. So, again, you know, John Wheeler was thinking about the weight distribution. Yes, yes, Porsche. And, of course, you of. know, to be honest, when we stopped, when this was, we were, we ended up being around about three seconds a, a K quicker than a Mark, Mark II, II. When, Mark II Escort. But, yeah. it, again, then if you looked at what the Quattro was not were doing, it wasn't enough. Yeah. It would have been a fantastic car on tarmac. But uh, obviously, I didn't realise you rallied it in South Africa. Yeah, I did. To any success? Uh, no. Well, why is there no Ford badge on the front of it? Is that a. I think it's just because it was <laughs> obviously it's all prototype parts. Ah, right. okay. And then we move along to Sierra and Escort. Sierra was a sort of stopgap for them, wasn't it? Escort, for them, as far as rallying goes, Escort cars with a four wheel drive, Sierra was two wheel drive. And you developed this car then into the Group A car and then the World Rally car. Yeah, I run my Michelin pilot programme for yeah. 93, 94 and won the championship and then 95 with different drivers in it. Then it went on to being the, the World Rally car as well. And John Wheeler's influence was, was heavy on this car. He was really involved in this, wasn't he, in the development of this car? Yeah, he was, um, you know, he, he was involved a bit in the uh, Sapphire 4 before, but then he moved on to developing then the Escort Cosworth into... Did you think this was a good car? Was this a, in its day, was this a... Yeah, this, this, this car had the potential for sure to be uh, one of the best cars. In, I mean, if you look, I mean, I think, in all honesty, I think Francois Delacour would have won the championship. Yes. He had, had his, yes. you know, he won, was it, six rallies out yes. of our, our 14 or whatever. Yeah. And then he had his accident. So he was well on track to clinch the world championship with this car. I never, ever, ever forget uh, RAC when he broke down and he stopped Gwyneth. Gwyneth, Evans, Evans, stop car, stop car. You must tow me, you must pull me. And we went through Witherp and Coombe. He was writing his pace notes and doing his pace notes behind us on a rope. Do you remember? I can't remember. Oh, my God, it was incredible. And he went on to do, I think he went on to do quite well in the rally. Not sure if he ended up in jail in the rally. Uh, that was somewhere down near Howard that, Hill Climb. That was, what you call it, wasn't it, by... Um, Howard Hill Climb. Yeah, by Morecambe there. In the, the, no, no, it was... Was it, was it? Was, it? it was near Howard. He was in overnight anyway, yeah. and they pulled him out in the morning to carry on, didn't they? Remember that, yeah? He was some incredible character, he was. So what else have we got in here? Uh, well, this is a famous car. This is Sebastian's um, 2018 Monte Carlo winning car. Uh, the 2017 car, he, he actually went to Lorenzo Batelli. Uh, and this one is uh, this one is now owned by a collector. Right. So will that so be that leaving the, here or will that be staying here? Uh, it, eventually it will be leaving, but uh, the same collector has also just got Miko's um, Finland winning car. And as are well. they a collector in the UK or are they going to? Where are they going to? Uh, no, it's a collector from overseas. When you sell a car like this, I mean, what kind of spares package do they get with it? Or do they well, this particular car, there's no spares because he, he doesn't in, really intend to right. use it. Right. Uh, yeah, I think he's looking at it as an investment. But you'd have to have some kind of... He would never start it then. He wouldn't be able to... So you wouldn't be able to start this car without a, an engineer, would you? With a laptop. Yeah, you'd need an engineer. And yeah, I thought laptop. so. Because they're pretty complicated, aren't they? I'm not going to ask you how much it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> What's the story about an F1 car? We touched on F1. Is this a clue? No, no. This is uh, this is just one of the uh, Ford show cars when Jackie Stewart was running before it's, uh, they moved to Jaguar. So we um, we had the uh, contract at the time of looking after all the show cars uh -huh. for the for the whole Ford uh, experience days. So. Um, no, there's no. It's no significance to Have where we might. Have you driven this car on the track? Is this car no, this is this? purely a show car. Purely a show car. Yeah. Then we move on to um, 
the other arm of M Sport for the last few years, which was the Bentley series. And this looks a very substantial car, like. This was the last race that we did as an official uh, Bentley race team, which was Kyle Army, uh, nine hour race. Where, where is the engine here? Because it's all scoops and troughs and the engine engines is, in there. The it? engine is in its um, normal place, but it's probably 180 millimetres lower than what it would be in right. a production car. In, in, and it's in probably two or 300 millimetres further back than so what the engine's it was. there then, is it? Yes. And what engine is in this? It's a, it is a Bentley V8. A V8. V8 engine, yes. No, uh, some of the Bentley's got a W12 in them, hasn't it? Yeah, same. Yeah, but uh, this is we we run with the. Driven V8. these, driven these round here or around the track? I've driven one at Anglesey. Oh, to did be you? Honest. Yeah. And what do you think of it? Yeah, it's um, it's pretty impressive. Is it? Yeah, I mean, you, you've got to imagine it's the normal Bentley is about 2.3, 2.4 tons. Yes. We've we homologated this car at 1260 kilos. 1200 kilos. 1260. Look at the size of it. What's it turning like then? You know, big long wheel rear wheel drive car and. Did it suffer from understeering, or did you have that no, on? No, no. I mean, it's uh, very well balanced. Very well balanced. Because I mean, again, we've got the trans the uh, transmission at the rear, yes, yes. so the weight distribution is is fifty fifty almost. Yes. This is actually a car that belongs to Bentley. Right. Um, so this is a, this is the last one to race. Um, so there's no decision. And there's only one nut holding the wheel on there. Is that a nut? How does that work then? Yeah, centre that, centre lock. That nut, nut there yeah. holds that. Good yeah. God. Yeah, you know, that sort of thing's standard in racing, but it's um, you obviously looking to optimise to get your tyres and wheels done as quick as you can, because obviously... Was there jacks inside these cars? Air jacks, pull up, air jacks. stick an airline in and boop, up yeah. they go. Yeah, I think that's your... Uh, there's your, uh, there's your jack air there. jack point. And this is all Kevlar again? All carbon, every, every So again, the carbon, working on carbon for the last three years with these cars, yeah. a good transition Season, for... Yes. Yeah, for every, every panel on this is... Uh, all exterior panels are carbon. Now, this is a special car in the history, I'm sure. Yeah, this is the one that Miko won Rally Finland with, and this has just been totally rebuilt. Uh, it's actually been shaken down around the test track, and again, this one's going to a collector. It won't, it won't be used, I don't think, but... Uh, Where's it going? Overseas. Overseas again. It's a beautiful example, isn't it? So Mikko Hervenen and Marcus Grunholm were the, were the key drivers in these, weren't they? And uh, Latvala as well. Yeah, 2006 and 2007 were the key years with Mikko and uh, Marcus. When, that's the, when we won the Manufacturers' Championship, yeah. both those years. Yeah, finished in Australia yeah. and in Ireland. Yeah, uh, was it? He rolled Ireland? the car, didn't he? Um, in Australia. He rolled the car in Australia, stage seven. Otherwise, he'd won the championship. Yeah. And yeah. then he crashed in Ireland as yeah. well. Yeah, he did too. Yeah, a lot of history there, isn't it? And How uh, many of these are left then? Because uh, they weren't built in abundance, were they? No. Um, I still will have. Um, can you get all the bits for these then? Have you got the. Yeah, we still got a good stock. You still got a stock of bits, or can you. Can you create these bits, because yeah, this is a body can. shell. This is different to that new car. This is a body shell, isn't it? Yes. So that's a... We've, that's got, a... we've got all the panels and the body shells. And... How could you keep all this stuff from years ago, then? It's in various buildings, and I've even got a lot you of the panels. a massive above. amount of stock. <laughs> it's incredible, yeah. This is the first Bentley that we built and raced, and this car then actually went on and won the, won the British Championship, so this is part of our collection. So this is the Generation 1 Bentley, and obviously and that's, that's the Gen 2. Gen 2. A couple of um, GT40s we've skipped by there. What's the story there? I can see there's a MW number plate on that one. So, yeah, these, that, um, one's, that one's mine. Are they just uh, uh, collecting collections that you've acquired? Well, I was lucky enough to, be, to get on the list with Ford to be able to, to get one of these. So that one's mine, this one's a customer's. Do you, have you taken this out much? Uh, I've been round the track twice in it, I think, and that's it. And that's it. It's only done 33 miles. How, how much were these to buy when they were with Ford? Uh, 500, roughly £550,000. And then what are they, what's it worth now? Some have sold um, for around about a million. Have they? Good little investment then, really. So Good little uh, pension pot. But you, you had to be on the list. You couldn't just order one, could you? No. There were... There was a restricted um, number. How many were built? 
I'm not sure, to be honest. They are building some more at the moment. Um, but it is very limited numbers. And where, where are these built, then? In Canada. Uh, incredible engineering. Uh, is that something that you could do here, then, if there was an opportunity? Would oh, be... For sure. I mean, if you look now, what we're doing with the tubular frame and yeah. what we're doing with all carbon Where's work... Where's the strength and... in this car, then? Is, there, is, this, is this all metal, then, or is it...? It's all carbon fibre. It's carbon. a full carbon fibre. And where's the engine, then? The engine's here. There at the back. And what is it? A V...? It's a V6. A V6. EcoBoost. Oh, it's an EcoBoost um, engine. Yeah, so, you know, this is all carbon structure. How old is this car? Well, it must be three years old. Three now. years old, I think. It must be, I think. It's a fantastic looking car, isn't it? This is one of the ones from the mid 2003, 2005. So they make them periodically every, every few years, then, do Well, they? this was the one that was done specifically for Le Mans, that one. That one? Yeah, and then this was just. Um, I can't remember when, when this. I think this was around 2003. Something special about these. Yeah, this one's... Um, this is yours? Yeah, this is mine. This is supercharged and they're, uh, they're obviously turbocharged. Turbocharged. And finally, we've got some, uh, some more uh, rallying history. This is another car that you built from scratch, S2000, and went to Monte Carlo and won. When Monte Carlo, when it went to S2000, yeah? Yeah. What year was, was that? That was 2010. 2010. Um, but that was it, another... But it wasn't a world championship event then. That's it. it it was a European um, yeah, ERC rally. ERC, yes. It lost its status for a year, yeah. didn't it? So on the same weekend, uh, Mika won Monte Carlo and uh, NASA won Qatar, I think it was. Qatar. The same, uh, same weekend. There's a few of these S2000s still about, isn't it? Yeah. Sounded fantastic car. Uh, great. How many of them were built then? Just under... 50, I think it was about was 48, 50? 48, was 49, really? something like that. Was there that. really? And it was a fantastic car, wasn't it? A real revy, racy thing. Yeah. And then this was the first World Rally car. Right. And this was two, 2011. 2011, so that was the following year after that. Yeah. And this was the first Fiesta then. So this is the Fiesta 1.6 turbo. Yeah. Um, We're still 1.6, aren't we? Still 1.6. Yeah. And engine development gone on a lot since this? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, this used a production cylinder block and everything, right. whereas now we're using a, a, a cylinder block machined out of a solid, machined out of out a solid of billet. Billets. You're doing all that in, 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 uh, in house, yeah? Yeah, we did the initial ones in house. Fantastic, right. fantastic. These, um, they've all got their own special kind of memories, these cars, I bet, have they? Yeah, I mean, they're all... Where were you when he came over the line and announced, and it was announced that he'd won? I was in bed. I remember watching it in bed. What, in Monte? No, I was, no, I wasn't in Monte, but I was at home when this car came over the line, because the last stage was called the Torini, wasn't it? Yes. And I think it actually finished just after the call, didn't it? Um, they turned right to the top of the call and went round those S-bends, down towards the little shop that sold the pan of the chocolate on the left-hand side. <laughs> You've got a better memory than me, Howard. Have you got a... Are you, is your OCD kicking in again? Yeah. You know what I'm like. <laughs> Don't go breaking it now. The yeah. window's gone down. That's OK. No, it's gone down again. No, it's gone down again now. What are you doing? Just leave it there. Don't know what's happening there. Oh, it's falling out. Watch out. Oh. Mm. Is it under warranty, boss? Need somebody to look at that. Yeah. It's on a pivot, isn't it? Yeah. I'll get it sorted. Well, a beautiful display of cars, and what a fantastic place to show them off. And this is all the development centre. What we're in the process of doing is we're going to move all our manufacturing out of yeah. the original facility into here. So, for, as an example, we'll the machine shop. We'll move into this new building, the fabrication shop, body shell production. So we want to take the manufacturing out of that building. All the car build design and everything will still be done over there. Yeah. But then the production side of the stuff, manufacturing side, will all be done in this right. building. Right. So that along is... with then all the test track test and the track. corporate suites and everything, which we can go and have a look at if you want to have a look in the. Just interestingly, you've got massive array of solar panels here, and I, I said that the house is extremely hot. 
Is is this place sort of carbon neutral? Does it produce enough electricity to see to? No, we obviously that's something that we, we're targeting, obviously, but it's we're not carbon neutral at the minute. But we have a we have a plan to to get there. And have you done the same on top of here? Have you put solar on top no, of here? No. Um, we we're looking to put another solar park out the back um, in the land where it was all that was reclaimed, where we took all the, the land from from here. Yeah. So we're going to do a, a separate solar park over there. And, I mean, you, to be you, honest, you, it was you just. You were saying you've got some development going on over here with some accommodation. Yeah. Blocks. We ha well, we had plans passed over there to do a, a like a 120 bed hotel. As you can imagine, we've all everybody's took a hit. I think with the COVID yeah, situation. Yeah. So what we're looking to do now is put in like 14, 15 lodges. Right. So that then people coming to use this test track facility yeah. can uh, can stay on site. Yeah. So this is the final bit, Howard. You can view the whole track. And what's the what's the circuit we've got here? How long is it? In its longest form, it's 2.7 kilometres. 2.7 kilometres. There's 18 different permutations. That's the way you can use it. Bank corners, sloping corners. Uh, there's a bit of everything. It's all done to basically industry standard. Right. Uh, surface is the different surfaces. Yeah. It's part from on the steady state turning circle. Yeah. Uh, there's two different grip levels on there, and then the rest of it is all one specific uh, type. Of this thing. is a wonderful facility, actually. I mean, the attention to detail is special. I wouldn't have expected anything less, in fairness <laughs> to you. Congratulations, you've done a fantastic job. You just need some customers in here now, don't you? Just, just need it filled up. Thank you very much for the tour. Thank you very much for some of the chats as well. And good luck this season in the World Rally Championship, and so we bring home some more trophies. And you may just need another weatherman. <laughs> Thank you. You're very welcome anytime, Howard. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have you.